Jason Aaron, writer of Thor and the Avengers, and you're watching Gem Mint Collectibles. What's going on, Geminites? It's your boy Gem Mint back at you with another Omnibus Haul. Stay tuned. All right, guys, first of all, this is not an Omnibus or Collected Edition, but Manimal picked this up for me from WonderCon when he was out there with TiVo and Cartel from Hell. I guess this is a variant cover by Alex Cormack. Is that how you say it? Where it's that whole change my mind guy. And it says, Migos are better than Bone Thugs. Change my mind. It's blasphemous cover. We all know it's Bone Thugs for life. But shout out Manimal. Hooked it up with a little Rick and Morty comic. Next up, I got a couple trades. So we were at El Paso Comic Con. If you guys follow us on Facebook or Instagram, you know that we had a booth out there. And uh, we were kicking it with Donny Cates. I went to his booth and he had a couple trades from his stuff that I have never read. So you have Buzzkill. This is a trade paperback that collects... What does this collect? Oh, and they're all signed by Donny on the front page as well. It's probably the first four or five issues, I would assume. Yeah, for, first four issues. Has a $13 cover price. Image published this. Uh, I flipped through it. It looks like it was right up my alley, so buzzkill. <clears throat> All right, here's buzzkill. Donnie Cates, Mark Resnick, Jeff Shaw, Lauren F. It's pretty cool. A little thin spine. It's like alcohol is involved. Mark Wade said, God, I wish I thought of this. Interesting, man. Oh, here goes that Donny Kate signature. Yeah, I flipped through it. I was digging the artwork. I figured the writing will be good. So we'll check it out. Uh, then uh, we picked up Redneck Volumes 1 through 3, also by Donny Cates, and also signed by Donny Cates on the front page. Uh, all of them are signed. And, um, yeah, collects 1 through 18 of Redneck. This was also published by Image. They're like $17 cover price. So I picked up, he had three of them at his desk, three volumes. I just picked them all up. Well, I had to do a little recent reads on these bad boys. Looks cool, though. <clears throat> we'll show Redneck all together, so... This was actually the last one of Volume 1 he had. You see he signed them all. It was pretty cool. I was hoping he, he had God Country. I, I mean, that's, I know it's not the first thing he wrote, but I don't know. I think, you know, it's a significant title of his. Well, here goes the backs of them. Spines. Let's look through some of the artwork here. I guess it's by Lissandro Estherin D. Cunif. Looks good. If you saw one of my last hauls, I picked up Volume 2 of uh, Umbrella Academy after being a big fan of the show. Um, volume 1 was out of print, but uh, I knew I should have grabbed that Volume 2 because I, I wasn't aware, but there was a reprint of Volume 1 coming out like a week later. So $18 cover price. This I got off in stock trades with the other two books, but it collects um, the first volume of Umbrella Academy, which uh, I was a big fan of. Fee was a fan, our daughter... Maybe uh, I'll have her read these books, too. She seemed pretty interested. This is uh, 1 through 6 of Umbrella Academy. <clears throat> All right, so here is the cover for Umbrella Academy, Apocalypse Suite. They, they capitalized right away, put the Netflix logo on there, since, since it was such a big hit. Um, Dark Horse produced this. So, I got to read this. Um, I hear the show was better, which is surprising to me. This looks like when Five goes too far into the future here and sees everything is destroyed. But I'm down to read it and check it out. It looks like BPRD, almost like the artwork. Hmm. 
Next up, the big Omni from the Hall, the Infinity War Omnibus, which is a huge book. Kind of did a little bait and switch on the uh, dust jacket, but it ended up actually being the hardcover was that white cover that was being solicited. But Infinity War, this collects the main story, which is issues one through six, and then it collects all the prequel stuff, all the tie-in stuff, all the aftermath stuff. This entire omnibus is collected in the Infinity Gauntlet box set, so it's a double dip. But I thought it is a good it's a good companion to the Infinity Gauntlet omnibus, as this is the story that, you know, takes place afterwards. Um if they do this same Omni with Infinity Crusade, I would pick that up too and probably ditch the box set because the box set, although it's cool, has dope art, they're standard size hardcovers, and I like the oversized format of Omnibus. But um $125 cover price. I copped it 50% off Insta on, on InStockTrades.com. Um, pure 90s goodness right here, y'all. All right, time for the war. See, the thing is, like, I don't know why Marvel named the, the movie Infinity War. It should have been named Infinity Gauntlet. This doesn't really have anything to do with the gauntlet. It has a lot to do with um, evil doppelgangers of everybody from some other dimension. Here's the spine. You have Wolverine fighting his evil doppelganger. Same with Cap. Same with Colossus. Gambit. Magus with the gauntlet. Or is it Magus? You know, I'm a big fan of the Spider-Man doppelganger. His first appearance is in this storyline. It's the inside of the dust jacket, so I thought it was pretty cool that they showed him some love. Here's the wraparound on the dust jacket. It goes the, the wraparound on the actual hardcover. It's actually the same graphic, just without the background stuff. No, actually, I'm tripping. It is different. Because you have... You have Wolverine fighting Cap, and you have Hulk. No, it, it looks similar, but it's different. Different art, for sure. So, I love the 90s stuff. I mean, this is the stuff that was coming out when I was a kid. I love the type of artwork. Adam Warlock, you have the gatefold covers on all six of the issues for the main story. Kind of like scenes from Endgame, it looks like here. You can see there goes your doppelganger Spider-Man. He gets killed in the first issue. Doppelganger Iron Man. Kang and Doom, Silver Surfer. I mean, they pulled out all the stops in the 90s, man. More Galactus. So you got all these tie-ins, all this an Infinity War crossover. You got Silver Sable. Look at Thanos using cosmic powers that are not his gauntlet. Gamora hit him with a throat punch. Some Doc Strange in the range. Guardians of the Galaxy. So you got Spider-Man. That's dope. With Evil Nova. From a Moon Knight run. Evil Beast. Alright, next up we have the Absolute Scarlet Volume 1. I have no idea about Scarlet, but if they make an Absolute for it, I'm going to pick it up. They probably wouldn't make an Absolute if it wasn't good. But it's by Brian Michael Bendis and Alex Maliv. I didn't even know it was by Bendis. So anyway, here's the uh, slipcase. What will the world look like when someone stands up and says, enough? Well, J-Lo answered that question in one of her movies in the 90s. Then here we go. Looks pretty sick. I don't know who published this. I guess it, it's DC if it's an absolute, right? Stretch that spine. All 
Alright, alright. So it looks like it's the first 10 or 12 issues or so of Scarlet. And uh, apparently it kept on going because it says Volume 1. So... Yeah, Scarlet 1 through 10. Should just knock it out and do a read on it. I probably will read this pretty soon. I've actually been knocking out some absolutes lately. Anyway, let's take a look at it together. Alright, here goes Absolute Scarlet. Jinx World, I guess, is the publisher. I don't know, it must be... Maybe, what, is that Bendis Company? I mean, it seems like it must be published by DC, though. Or maybe they, maybe they own it now. Alright. Scarlet. It's just 10 issues. I noticed that they had like scripts in the back. We'll flip through that. Pretty interesting style of drawing. Looks like kind of like watercolor looking to it. Almost like a sketch vibe. I love the absolutes that they have the ribbon for the built-in bookmark. Always helpful. So I don't have to use like a dollar bill or something. So you get the first 10 issues. Then you get variant covers and you get scripts. It's pretty cool to see. Alright guys, so that's my haul for today. Kind of a mixed bag of stuff, but um, it was really cool to pick up books from the writer. Donny Cates was super cool. He came on our live show. If you watch episode 50, he jumps in at the one hour mark. Uh, he gave us a little drop that I'm going to put in front of some videos and stuff. So, you know, when I went to his booth after this, uh, well, to get the drop, actually, I was like, you know what, man, let me pick up some of his trays. It's, you know, he's a good writer. We love his stuff. And I'm interested to read his independent stuff. Uh, I love uh, Baby Teeth. You know, I know most people know him from Venom and Thanos and Cosmic Ghost Rider, but I figured I'd pick up his independent stuff. And plus, it was cool to get it signed. Let me know what you think about the haul in the comments below. Am I going to love Scarlet? Should I drop everything and read it now? Uh, I know you're going to have mad questions about Infinity War, so bring them on. Um, looking forward to next week, man. Mortal Kombat 11 drops. Avengers Endgame drops. So, uh, it's going to be hype. Thanks for watching, you guys. Man, hit the like. Make sure to sub it up, man. Oh, and I'm working on the 25K subscriber giveaway setup, so stay tuned, make sure to subscribe, and stay minty fresh. Peace.